It's a motherfucking 16-bit feeding frenzy. We have folks going after selling their internal organs and firstborns just to be able to go and get their hands on a Super Nintendo Classic. It's essentially just version 2.0 of the NES Classic epidemic that went and swept the nation all over again. Doesn't matter what corner of the earth that you're in, motherfuckers are willing to be able to go without food and water just to be able to get their hands on one of these little fucking plastic beasts. But all this talk about the NES Classic and the SNES Classic got me to thinking, what about a motherfucking Nintendo 64 Classic? That's some shit that actually has me a tad bit more excited than even the previous two, despite the fact that the Super Nintendo is still my all-time favorite Nintendo system that they've ever created. But still, I want to go and construct a wish list, a must-have list of games to have on a Nintendo 64 Classic. And this, I already know for a fact, I'm gonna have motherfuckers say, Alpha, you forgot about this, how could you make this list without this? Who well, you know, it, I would like this video, but in a thumb it down because you forgot. So I don't fucking care, make your own goddamn video, make your own fucking list, or leave it in the comments. Bitch, to your heart's content, this is my shit right here. And I tried to be as reasonable as I possibly can, just taking into account of all the titles that ended up making the system what it is, having as much variety as possible with that any one genre just kind of taking over the entire thing, such as platformers and racing games. Nintendo 64 just has so many good ones of each, but I didn't want them to just be the only things that are on this list right here. And I also was taking into account of the Virtual Console. You figure that's probably the best measuring stick of what we could potentially see on a Nintendo 64 Classic. When you think about it, you figure they've already perfected the emulation for these games, they're already done, and if anything they just needed to go and take those files and then shove them into one of these systems and then push it out on the store shelves. And I was excited at the prospect and idea of something like this, except for the Virtual Console, we've only had like 20-something Nintendo 64 titles between the Nintendo Wii and the Wii U. That's not a whole hell of a lot, but if that's going to be like the measuring stick, if that's going to be the master list of sorts, I'm going to go and add to that or possibly just edit that a little bit. So we're going to go and start off this shit with the most obvious of entries because it's Super Mario 64. I mean, undoubtedly, I know most people will say, Ocarina of Time, but for me, Super Mario 64, I mean, when the system launched back in 96, Super Mario 64 took over everything. It became the blueprint for what most 3D games want to achieve, want to strive to be, and what they had to look at and say, okay, so that's how we go about this. Well, shit, that seems simple enough. And every game thereafter kind of just took that and ran with it. And then Crash Bandicoot came in, decided to go and talk a whole bunch of shit, but yeah, it's Crash Bandicoot, he's fucking amazing. But still, Super Mario 64 obviously is like, it's a no-brainer title that you would have on there. But then, F-Zero X. F-Zero X, I always try to tell people F-Zero X is the best damn entry in the entire series, though F-Zero GX is arguably the better game, but damn it, I love the soundtrack from X. I mean, technically, I prefer all the gameplay and, and graphics and shit of GX. I mean, Sega knocked out of the fucking part, but X? You know, and if they did F-Zero X, if they wanted to go and pull, like, some real Invento clever shit, include the Nintendo 64 DD content for F-Zero X on something like this? I mean, people outside of Japan never got to experience that, and then if most were going to, I mean, emulation for the Nintendo 64 DD is honestly not that fucking far along, it is not very easy to get up and running, and it's far from perfected, but then... You also have the whole idea of the 64DD itself is impossible to get your fucking hands on because they barely made any of them. So most folks either don't know about it or have just never had the opportunity or chance to be able to play it. So if you made it official like they did with Star Fox 2 on the SNES Classic, that's something I think most people would be all for having. But then, one of the titles I had whenever I got my Nintendo 64 for Christmas of the year that it came out, Wave Race 64. 
it's still one of my all-time favorite Nintendo 64 games. Graphically, it blew me away just for the fucking water in the physics alone. That shit was amazing. And I ended up playing it to the point that I knew the game inside and out could crush all the fucking AI and could do all the fucking tricks. Got to ride around on the dolphin and stuff. And I love the soundtrack and that shit. It's just, it's a really good game. And it's weird because whenever they go and they bend their arms and shit, like because the polygonal uh, character models, they're so fucking crude, like their elbow will be missing and shit. Like just completely gone as if like something came up, took a big fucking chunk out of it. And they were like, doesn't matter, Kawasaki Ninja Jet. And they're just flying down the fucking ocean. Like, that. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I, I guess, fuck it. Paper Mario, Paper Mario is, it's a staple for me because you gotta keep in mind that most people, they love the show The Thousand Year Door, but I mean, it got started with Paper Mario. Most people go and argue and debate about the fact that it technically got started with Super Mario RPG on SNES, but still, Paper Mario was a fantastic game, and I feel like that one doesn't get enough recognition and love from the fan base, despite the fact that it was the first within that series. And this is something like the role playing game genre wasn't exactly blowing the fuck up on Nintendo 64, so I would like to see some kind of RPG show up on this, and this would be one of the best opportunities to go and showcase this for the brilliance that it was. So, yeah, that's that's kind of like, it's a must. But, talking about Star Fox, Star Fox 2 and all that shit, Star Fox 64. Think about it. Star Fox 64 ended up taking a lot of the concepts and ideas that they had in Star Fox 2 and they just ran with it. And it was everything that the original was, but a million times better. You know, it aged a lot better. If you ever played the version of it on the 3DS, you'll completely understand. Like, it's, it's a staple series that I feel that Nintendo doesn't really give the love and recognition to that it honestly, genuinely deserves. And I'm still waiting for a day where we get, like, some big space-like open-ended game where we can fly around in our wing and go and shoot down a bunch of shit with our crew and go around, do side quests, get more people for our team, maybe switch between those ships and each one has, like, its own abilities and stats and blah 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 but then you can land on planets and run around Star Fox adventure style that ship would be fucking amazing multiple different ship types it's, it, it's a dream of mine but still if you were going to play one of the best and arguably the best entry entire Star Fox series and I mean 64 is probably the best one and that should obviously will be on there uh, Mario Kart 64 I mean okay again the racing genre is just like amazing and deep as fuck, like balls deep in the racing genre on Nintendo 64, but Mario Kart 64 is one of those titles that it's kind of hard to beat. I mean, for me, for the longest time, Mario Kart 64 was my favorite until Mario Kart 8. I fucking love 8, especially Deluxe because, you know, all the extra shit. But 64, the battle mode. You could just give me the fucking battle mode and I'd be fine with that shit, but dude, holy fuck, the amount of hours I put in on that shit whenever I was good, it was, it was kind of ridiculous. You know, and playing that in four-player split-screen, nah, you, you can't really fuck with anything like that. I mean, it's it, it's Mario Kart 64. The name Mario Kart 64 should let you know and suggest that it is fucking greatness. But then, we have Kirby 64. Now, okay, Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards, people have this kind of love-hate relationship with it. And I realized, like, a lot of folks hated on it because they didn't like how easy it was, for example. And I think it's kind of odd because most folks aren't aware, but Kirby games are pretty fucking challenging and get really difficult towards, like, the middle to later half of the game. And keep in mind that I am a platforming game connoisseur. I am a motherfucking beast when it comes to that genre. But Kirby, it, it, the entire series, mind you, can really fuck you up. Like, the first time going through that shit, and I'm talking like, you don't know what the hell you're going to expect, yet that's something that they're just going to pound the shit out of you. But I like the fact that in Kirby 64, they ended up giving you this whole thing where it's like, you could go and combine together a bunch of power-ups and make new power-ups, and there was nobody just, like, excited about that shit. And I like that it was still technically, like, in 2D perspective, whereas everything else around that time was, like, dropping your ass into a 3D world and just letting you run amok. And I think that's a really good entry. It doesn't get the love that it deserves. Is it one of the top-tier best? No, there are definitely better entries, but it's far from being bad. And just because it's not the best doesn't mean that it's not worth playing. But... Yoshi's Story, and it's weird that I'm mentioning this because back in the day when Yoshi's Story first came out, I really didn't like it. Truth be told, I just wasn't into it at all. I don't know what it was about the game, I just, I didn't gravitate towards it. I tried it, I played it, but then as years progressed, 
and I went back and I played the game, I found that I ended up enjoying it a lot more. I ended up liking the level design a lot more. It was kind of like with Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island, I feel that I didn't appreciate back in the day when I went back and played it years later. I ended up liking the game a whole lot more, and for all the same exact reasons. Like, and it's odd because graphically, that game has aged a lot better than most Nintendo 64 games, which end up looking very fucking blurry and almost ridiculous. But the nice thing about most of the titles that I'm talking about right now, if you've gotten to see many of these on the virtual console, they're crisp and clear, they look really fucking nice. I mean, sure, the texture work, I mean, is really fucking fuzzy and blurry on many of the games out there, but at the same exact point, they still look much more lush and vivid than they did previously on your fucking CRT little bullshit RCA television with your Nintendo 64 strapped up to that bitch with one of those shitty ass third party controllers that your parents got from Kmart. Yeah, it's, I feel like I'm speaking from experience here. Just, just a tad bit. But still, Yoshi's Story I put on there. Now, one, I think a lot of people would want to see Pokemon Puzzle League Challenge, but I actually want to opt for Pokemon Snap. If you've ever gotten to see me live at one of the panels like that I've done at conventions and shit, I've name-dropped Pokemon Snap so many fucking different times, and I've actually done it in numerous different videos as well, that why the fuck didn't we get a Pokemon Snap game on the Nintendo Wii U? It just, it seemed like it was designed for that, and with the Nintendo Switch, again, it just, it would be perfect going and taking that around, because we are talking about a system that is completely and utterly portable, so this is fucking ideal and absolutely perfect, and apparently they have pitched and thought about this idea, but didn't follow through with it for various different unforeseen reasons. But Pokemon Snap, despite the fact that it's a short game, and I know most people will be like, yeah, but it's so short, who the fuck cares, dude? It's an on-rail shooter, but you don't have guns out blazing just shooting the fuck out of everything that you see. No, 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 no. You have a camera and you're just trying to capture pictures of Pokemon. And I, with how I mean, fuck, dude, we got, what, over 700 now of these bitches? I would love to see this shit brought back to the forefront, have a proper sequel done up, and, dude, it would be so fucking badass. But Pokemon Snap, now, I, I'm all for that. I don't need Hey You Pikachu, because I don't need to be yelling into it the entire time, and then Pikachu doesn't understand what I'm saying most of the fucking time to begin with, and then I'm getting pissed off, and he's getting pissed off, and you say the word PlayStation, then he literally gets pissed off, and he attacks you, which is kind of fucked up. So we'll just roll with Pokemon Snap, and, and be fine with that. And, and we can, fine, we can put in Pokemon Puzzle League Challenge. Fine, just whatever. Or Dr. Mario 64. I guess we need some kind of puzzle game in there, so it just one of those. I don't know. Both? Fuck, it doesn't matter. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. Bunch of those together. I mean, you'd have to be fucking insane. Like, you'd have to be a straight-up fucking lunatic to not want to go and include these games in it. Because we were talking about staple series within Nintendo's catalog of games. Like, like absolute fucking crown jewel. But within the Nintendo 64 library. You gotta figure that, in a lot of ways, how Super Mario 64 became a trendsetter, so did Ocarina of Time. Like, that, it just did. You know, the whole fucking targeting system of that game, and just going forward, and the fact that it gave us the whole entire feeling of the past entries, where it was like a big open world for us to run around in, and the very first time that anybody got to see like little bullshit VHS tapes or any of the stuff from Space World or fucking uh, E3, anything like that, where you got to see these videos of all the shit, we were just blown the fuck away. We we're like, oh my god, one of the best adventure games is now in 3D. And now, you know, we're, we've already played the living shit out of Breath of the Wild, and to be honest, in a lot of ways, after playing Breath of the Wild, it's like... <sighs> How, how, how can you even go backwards, you know? But you can still appreciate these games for what they are. I mean, sure, we've arguably gotten the best of the best now, but, I mean, Majora, and keep in mind, like, I'm one of those weird motherfuckers. I actually prefer Majora's Mask over Ocarina of Time, so, yep, yeah, I'm one of those fucking people. I think it's just because I like the mood, I like the setting, I like the atmosphere, I like how dark it was, I like how fucked up the storyline was, and, I mean, you get used to the whole, like, time system inside of it, but still, it's just one of those things. You gotta put both of them on there, that's a fucking no-brainer. But then that brings me into Mario Party 2 and 3. Like, we have Mario Party, what, uh, uh, 100? Like, that's coming out, and that's like a greatest hits montage. But Mario Party 2 and 3 have always been some of the best entries out of the entire Mario Party series, and there are so fucking many now. But 2 and 3, I wouldn't know what to pick out of them. Because there were certain mini games on each that I liked over the other, and there were certain boards that I preferred on one over the other. And in a lot of ways, I'm like, 
you could just have both or just pick. Flip a fucking coin. It wouldn't matter. I'd be happy with either or. But still, it's one of those things like you gotta have Mario Party on there. And if you include two controllers on this bitch like they did with the SNES Classic, it'd be ideal. And especially since plenty of the games that I'm going to be discussing and have already discussed are multiplayer games. I mean, Nintendo 64 is already like a four-player monster of a fucking machine to begin with. So why the hell not? But then, Donkey Kong 64. This is where shit gets a little weird because, I mean, now we're dabbling into Rare territory. In Rare developing games, despite the fact that they are officially licensed and they are owned by Nintendo, that's where waters get murky, and I'm going to go and get into all of that like in a little bit, but I always wonder, because like, Donkey Kong 64 I always considered to be a very important title. Granted, it's not nearly as good as like Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3, and then Donkey Kong Country Returns, and... I mean, okay, yeah, it is a lot better than them hitting a fucking bongo drum and all that shit, but still, I'm just kind of curious if Donkey Kong 64 could get included onto that bitch. I don't know. I mean, I would want it to be, because I like the game enough to warrant that, and again, that's one of those games that when I first played it, wasn't all that impressed, went back and played it, ended up enjoying it a lot more. I just think that's kind of odd that there's quite a few games on this list that that's what it's like for me, that I didn't really dig them or appreciate them or like them as much, but then later on was able to enjoy them a lot more. So it's kind of like the nostalgia goggles reverse effect, like, you know, taking off the rune tinted glasses, and then suddenly everything is in all murky and, and, and dragged through the muck and mire and covered in fucking nothing but flaming shit. And I'm like, wow, it's actually really good. Kind of amazing, but still. But Super Smash Brothers, where the series actually fucking started, Super Smash Brothers would it, it makes a lot of sense. There's too many motherfuckers out there that already play the newest one, play the living shit out of Melee, and then ignore the fact that Brawl even exists. But what about where it started? On the Nintendo 64. I mean, Nintendo didn't even think this shit was going to sell all that well. They weren't even thinking about bringing it out to the United States. You know that. Like, they were thinking about keeping that shit in Japan only. PAL regions, you weren't going to get it. Australia, you weren't going to get it. North America, you weren't going to get it. They were going to keep that shit there, and they said, fuck it. They released it. Worldwide phenomenon. So maybe Nintendo will just understand that they need to start keeping games just everywhere rather than exclusive. In Japan, like, look, if you want to keep them on that island, you're you're also negating the fact that you have, like, an entire audience everywhere around the world. But Super Smash Brothers was awesome as shit. I'm sorry. I know it's not nearly as good as the later entries and shit just because the series has, like, expanded and blown up and shit, but it's still worth getting and playing and appreciating. And besides, this might get people into playing, like, a, a whole lot of tournaments and shit again just because this exists. So I wouldn't mind that. But... Last but not least, Sin and Punishment. Look, Star Successor is a way better game, I will admit, but Sin and Punishment, I kept thinking we were going to get this release, and it didn't. It stayed in Japan, but the fact is that you can go and import that shit, and it's just fine. And just like what I was talking about with Pokemon Snap with it being an on-rail shooter, that's essentially what this is. And I mean, you got fucking treasure working on a game for Nintendo. That right there automatically tells me this shit's going to be amazing. I mean, it, they're one of the best game development studios, hands down ever. They were always pushing the envelope, pushing the bar, and trying to do something inventive and clever and new. And I, I'm sorry, but it, when you got the crew who's just like, yeah, we did Gunstar Heroes, oh, we're working on this, I will pay full fucking attention, and I did. And Sin of Punishment was really exciting, and it was really fucking fast-paced and fun. It was just like, dude, Yes to all this shit. And I always thought it was kind of weird. Why is it more expensive on the virtual console than everything else out there? But like two bucks. Why? Why? Why is that? Why? Why the two dollars? I don't get all that shit. Okay. So this is going to be the part where I transition from talking about all the Nintendo related games that seem like absolute no brainers. I know I'm leaving off things like 1080 snowboarding and a bunch of other shit, but. Keep in mind, again, it's my fucking list. Quit complaining. Like, I'm allowed to make my own damn list. <laughs> Allow me to be my own individual. But these are some licensed games that I had thought about. And I'm, I'm talking about, like, licensed games as is, like, mu movies, uh, TV shows, music, blah, blah, blah. So, the Star Wars games on Nintendo 64, I mean, we had the Episode 1 pod racing game, we had Rogue Squadron, and we had the one that they pushed a whole fucking lot, and that was Shadows of the Empire. The one that I kept on thinking that's what Star Wars Episode 1 was going to be, and I'm still hoping that we get that as a fucking movie. God damn, would it be cool. 
But if you looked on the original Nintendo 64 boxes, I mean, this was one of the earliest titles within a series existence. And keep in mind that Nintendo 64 technically launched with only two games. It's fucked up to think about it like all these years later, but still, it was an important ass game. The idea of me running around with my blaster, just shooting the living crap out of a bunch of things, I thought was awesome as fuck. Like, I just really digged it a whole bunch. I mean, I was back then you figure I was playing Super Star Wars games, I was playing Dark Forces, and then getting to play this. I figure if they end up doing some shit like this, I'd want to see them have, obviously, expansion pack support built in, and the rumble pack feature built into this shit. Like, it would make a lot of sense and be easy as fuck to do, because the expansion pack shit, it's not like that they need something physical to be included inside of this, but it would just take it into account. And the rumble feature is something that they could just build into the controllers. Because, I mean, when Star Fox 64, when that launched, it was a really big deal because that shit it was like, Oh my god, my controller's shaking and shit! And then DualShock came out. We never looked back since then. But, seeing, seeing like, uh, Rogue Squadron, when you had the expansion pack in for that dupe, it was like night and day. It looked so much fucking nicer. In Episode 1 Pod Racer, I like that just because it was so fucking fast. Like, any time that I play racing games, I like gimmicky racing games. I don't want all this sim racing shit, I'm just not into that. But you're gonna go and give me pod racing? And I did think that pod racing was cool as fuck, admittedly, in Episode 1. I know most people have, like, all their reserved thoughts about Episode 1, 2, and 3, and how shitty they are. But pod racing was admittedly kinda cool. I mean, some cringy fucking dialogue accompanied a lot of it, but the video game was badass as shit, and Rogue Squadron was fucking awesome, and then we got two and three. Nah, no looking back after them. I mean, they were followed up on the GameCube and they looked fucking amazing. But still, the Star Wars games wouldn't mind seeing them because they were a big part of the Nintendo 64 library and what made it so special and important, so I think it, it makes sense. But the one that everybody would be asking about, the one everybody would be requesting, the one that is most important is obviously GoldenEye. Look, James Bond, 007 Goldeneye. The movie, the movie's okay, it's, it's pretty decent. But the game, holy fuck. This would be something that's difficult because you have MGM Studios and then you have Rare and Microsoft and then Nintendo. So this is like, this is one of those situations where you got two parents fighting over custody of a kid and shit and they don't know where to go so they end up just going with their fucking grandparents and it's just like a tug of war for love. That's Goldeneye. Goldeneye's just a poor kid caught in the middle of this and everybody's just like, the poor child, that poor beautiful child, why would you do that? They have to go and suffer at the hands of you, you uncaring curs. Wait, Goldeneye. That, that's all I know. I mean, motherfuckers have completely remade it with, like, the Unreal Engine and shit, and I always thought that was amazing. But GoldenEye is one of the best first-person shooters I've ever fucking played. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. GoldenEye is still the shit. I can still go back to that and enjoy it a lot. Great, I fucking hate using a Nintendo 64 controller. Like, three fucking handles and shit. Like, where's the other hand, Nintendo? Where's the other fucking hand? Like, you hand this shit to a kid and they're just like... They, they all know what the fuck to do, and if you got one of those Donkey Kong controllers where it, like, it looks like bananas on the end, they're like, what, what the fuck is, what the fuck is this? You gave me bananas! Bananas! Like, no, nobody knows what the fuck to do, but still, I can pick it up, still rock it, still gotta get used to the fucking C buttons again, that shit's just fucking weird. We didn't have dual analog back then. It was dark times back then, very fucking dark. It, 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 seriously, the fucking dark ages then, just, shit was ridiculous. Like, I had to go and buy something separate to make the controller rumble? What? <laughs> and, shit was fucking nuts. But still, GoldenEye, it'd be amazing, but I know realistically, it, it more likely won't happen just because money would have to be split too many ways, they'd have to go and get too many rights from too many people, just fuck all that. But. This I would like to see, but considering how outdated it would be, and WWE probably won't be all that for it, but god damn it's one of the most important games on this system when it comes to just multiplayer. WWF, no fucking mercy. Granted, it fucking is not in there, but we can just put that shit right down the middle. I think there's enough space between no and mercy to go and do that. No mercy was the shit. I'm sorry, any time that you had motherfuckers go and booting that shit up, and the amount of times that I went and made creative characters that always look like they were half fucking retarded, going down to the ring and they were just beating the shit out of Stone Cold and The Rock and The Undertaker and Mankind and anybody I can get my fucking hands on, goddamn right, I was happier than shit. And 
I mean, back then, we had WCW versus NWO Revenge, we had WrestleMania 2000, like, dude, they had so many good Nintendo 64 games, and granted, you know, there was also Warzone and Attitude and shit, which I still believe had better creative character modes, but everything else, no, these played fucking phenomenally, they were just so much fucking better in terms of just gameplay, and gameplay always is going to be the most important thing, and people still do No Mercy tournaments nowadays, so I think that they'd be fucking elated to see some shit like this, but it also brings me to another license entry from the comic book world this time, Turok. Now, it could be Turok 1 or Turok 2. Turok 2 is a much better game in virtually every single capacity and way, but the first Turok is how we got introduced to the series. Most people didn't know what the fuck Turok was at all. They were like, the Turok the Dinosaur Hunter, what the fuck's that? It is a badass first-person shooter running around killing the fuck out of dinosaurs and shit. And I'm sorry, I felt badass as shit. Anytime I had that fucking bow and arrow, and you had like the charge up little shots, and you're just taking everything out, Loved it. And seeing like the individual screenshots in video game magazines and stuff, it looked real as fuck. I mean, granted, it's probably the best example of Nintendo 64 fog just going to some next level shit. I'm talking like right up there, like it made no fucking sense. I was just like, dude, they it it gave Silent Hill a run for its fucking money. Calm your fucking tits that are just going everywhere, like, seriously. We don't fucking need all that shit. But those ones I'd be all for. Then Third-party games. Of course, third-party games are going to be really important because, I mean, Nintendo 64, while it didn't have the third-party support of something like, say, the PlayStation 1, it still had some really awesome shit on it. And a couple of these entries I know are going to be difficult for them to include just because of the actual rating system for them because they're mature rated games and all that shit, but still, they were just very, very important games to me on the system, and I think a lot of people would dig seeing them on there. But the first up... One I ended up renting a whole lot from Giant Eagle and from Eagle Video back in the day, well before I ended up getting to own a copy myself, is Doom 64. Doom Guy is the fucking shit. The new Doom is the shit. Doom 64 is its own entry. People think about it. Doom 1, Doom 2, Doom 3, the new Doom. Doom 64 is its own shit. Like, motherfuckers always forget that this thing exists and it is so fucking badass. Like, the lighting and the mood in it. It is probably one of the meanest looking Doom games out there in terms of just like environments and shit. Like, the, when you're walking around and shit, it really felt scary. Like, it was a straight up horror game. It has its own guns, it has its own enemy. Like, dude, it's so fucking unique, yet a lot of people weren't appreciating it. I was just like, why? This is like a straight up old school Doom game. It was just as fast as the versions on PC and shit. I was digging that. And I mean, it's it's Doom, an exclusive Doom to a Nintendo system. The, the company that everybody's just like, all oh, this fucking kitty shit and blah, blah, blah. Yet they had their own fucking Doom. Come on, come on with that shit. Like, kind of breaks my heart. But back to back entries. And we got some Resident Evil stuff right here. Resident Evil 2 on Nintendo 64. Look, we could just go and include this for the sheer fact that they managed to take two discs of Resident Evil and mash them onto a cartridge. I don't know what wizardry they managed to go and pull off making this shit happen, but they did. And sure, I mean, it, the compression for the fucking CG cutscenes is absolutely bonkers and out of this world ridiculous and the artifacts are all over the fucking place on it and it looks kind of like shit but it's still resident evil 2 on a nintendo system and it has a lot of its own features i mean granted one of them is to be able to just turn to fucking blood green so then that ends up making me think of like house of the dead whenever you get it at home and they have to go and you have to go change some shit around in the settings and stuff but still nintendo 64 resident evil 2 I mean, we didn't end up getting Resident Evil Zero because I ended up getting pushed off onto the Nintendo GameCube, and it was a lot better for that because the late release Resident Evil Zero on Nintendo 64 would have sold like shit. But Resident Evil 2 is one of my favorite RE games of all time. I fucking love that game. It's like one of the best sequels, one of the best survival horror games. It was one of the most important games of that entire generation. So yeah, I would definitely include that shit on there because most people I know, they were fucking stoked to shit. If they didn't have a Dreamcast or a PC or a PlayStation 1 and stuff, they wanted that. And Sega Saturn missed that on it entirely. But Nintendo 64, they got their own version, exclusive shit. Yeah, I mean, it, kinda, it makes sense. Back to back Capcom goodness and get from Resident Evil 2 all the way to Mega Man 64. If you liked Mega Man Legends, Mega Man 64 is just Mega Man Legends, which is fucking fine with me. 
an action-adventure role-playing game starring the motherfucking Blue Bomber running around in dungeons and shit and going and getting upgrades to equipment and a big-ass storyline to go with it. One that's actually good, mind you. Like, the shit plays out a lot like an anime, and it's inside of a game. They actually did 3D well. Like, third-person shooters back in a 32-bit day was kind of iffy here and there because they were still trying to go and get their feet wet and figure out, okay, what works and what doesn't. I always thought Mega Man 64 did a fucking phenomenal job. I mean, I've been playing the games for years and I've always considered, like, Mega Man Legends 1 and 2 to be my favorites amidst the entire series. And you gotta consider that at least this would be getting some kind of love because Capcom, all they're doing is fucking rehashing Mega Man games and re-releasing them, which I'm happy at least it's still getting some kind of fucking love, but we're not getting new games anytime soon. Doesn't matter how many times I go and I fucking defend them, and I'm like, yeah, they're gonna go and do something except for they're not, and I'm just like, well, what are you doing for the celebration? Oh, well, during this press conference, we're gonna hold a Mega Man doll, and then we're gonna tell you to point to where we're touching you inappropriately because we are abusing the shit out of the fucking fan base. Really fucking dumb little mini rant over, but Mega Man 64, again, that would be like one of the more ideal entries to go and toss onto this shit just because, I mean, why the fuck not? But another series that went from 2D into 3D in this generation, the Mystical Ninja Goemon on Nintendo 64. There's two of them. I want to go with the first one. The first one was honestly like a full 3D game. I mean, the other one's technically 3D in a 2D perspective, and that's a lot more like the Super Nintendo games, but I always preferred this one because I thought that they did the open world 3D shit well. I mean, I liked running around going and killing ghosts and little fucking goofy ass monsters and shit. I like the weapons that they had in it. I like the fact that the game didn't take itself very fucking seriously, and there was lots of fucking like potty humor and shit inside of it, and it was just a ridiculous game. I dig that. I really liked the Mystical Ninja games on SNES, and I always want to get my hands on them and play them and shit, but I'm just like, why don't they get more attention? I mean, this was Konami in their heyday, going and kicking ass and taking names and being the bad motherfuckers they once were, and this was one of the reasons why. It's because they made bitchin' ass games like this. So, I mean, I, I'd be all for that. It'd be, it'd be pretty good. But we don't have to stop there. We can roll on into yet another game that went from 2D into 3D, and it's Bomberman 64. Hudson, who's now owned by Konami, Bomberman 64 was the shit. I mean, we had several Bomberman games, and fucking Second Attack is like a million, jillion, billion fucking dollars. They're just like, you know, how many mortgages do you want to go and take out and shit? And be like, all oh, right, you can go and do that. Oh, wait, you know, we were thinking about selling your fucking daughter into prostitution and shit to go in and pay that stuff off because, well, you're kind of late on those payments by, man, two and a half hours. Ah, uh, time is money, and unfortunately, she's going to be getting it. But Bomberman 64, the original one, the very first one that ended up coming out, you gotta love my transitions from talking about prostitution to Bomberman. Bomberman 64 was fucking awesome as shit, and especially since, like, I still remember to this day singing along with the, the commercial that they did was a parody of the Spider-Man uh, song from way back in the day with Bomberman, Bomberman, uh, mass destruction across the land, builds a bomb, any side, uh, some shit like that, I don't know. But me and my friends ended up singing along with that a whole lot. I rented this game a whole shit ton, again, well before I ended up owning the game. There, there's, there's a trend going along here. But... You had a Bomberman adventure game with, like, this big, deep fucking storyline, which was weird to me because I was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna pick Bomberman. I didn't think that any of them had, like, backstories or any shit like that, and there were so many Bomberman games in Japan that we didn't get. But at the time, I was young, I didn't know about all that shit, I didn't give a fuck. But then they had this, and it was like, 3D worlds, and you could go run all over the fucking place. You had boss battles and shit, I was just like, dude, this is fucking awesome! And, you know, it's actually one of my favorite Bomberman games. I mean, Saturn Bomberman's still always going to be my all-time favorite, because 10-player Bomberman. The fact that we don't have 10-player Bomberman on the one on Nintendo Switch is still just... That shit fucking kills me. But, oh man, this one was fucking awesome as shit. And here's a little tidbit, a little piece of advice from Alpha Omega Sin to all of you. If you were going to play this shit and try to survive in a, like, a, a little room filled with the enemies who are trying to go and fuck your bomber ass up, yeah... Run diagonal. Run diagonal as much as you possibly can and just drop shit as, as much as possible and blow them the fuck up because, you know, it blows up in an X and Y axis and shit. And if not, you're just going to damage yourself and eventually just, like, you're, you're committing suicide. So, 
don't do that. And also forget about Bomberman on Xbox 360, because that's not a thing. Never will be a thing. Fuck that thing. That that's it's a bad thing. But we should jump over from this on into Harvest Moon 64. That's right, this Sunday, 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 you can have yourself a farming and dating sim blended together. Oh, did you like Stardew Valley? Find out where it all began. And Harvest Moon 64 is seriously the shit. I mean, we were coming off of Harvest Moon on Super Nintendo, which I'm still dying to get my hands on one of those entries because, God, well, entries, on that entry because it's just so fucking expensive now. Way too fucking expensive for me to want to bother with. But Harvest Moon 64, dude. Harvest Moon, back to nature. Harvest Moon, it's a wonderful life. Like, all that shit was just so fucking good. And Harvest Moon 64, I mean, was a part of that. And they just did all the shit well. I mean, and I know that I might not be selling you very well on it because it's like, oh, a farming sim, that sounds exciting. A dating sim, oh, oh yeah, uh, that's, that's too fucking no. So I'll pass all together. But there was something about you ended up feeling like you achieved a lot from seeing your farm grow from some little bullshit shack into a full-fledged house and then you you end up getting married and having kids and shit and it's just like all this cool stuff and I liked it plus I'm pretty sure that's the one with Jenny in it uh the chick with the brown and blonde hair and shit yeah waifu very fucking good but that I'd like and another one which was totally unexpected to even be on the Nintendo 64, but considering the fact that it got its start on a Nintendo system, I guess it shouldn't be all that surprising, but Ogre Battle 64. I mean, strategy and tactical style RPGs are something that most people have trouble getting into because they're very fucking slow paced. It's like a game of chess, except for you have people going and stabbing the shit out of each other or cleaving each other or using spears or whatever fucker use bow and arrows from a distance, which I always fucking hate them. But then you got people casting magic and summoning shit. It's all very fucking awesome. Ogre Battle 64 is badass as shit. Like if you like Final Fantasy Tactics or the, the Skya games or anything like that, Ogre Battle 64 is essentially right up your alley. And this is back in the day whenever, like, you, you figure the first one, that came out on, what, SNES? And then um, there was Tactics Ogre. And a lot of that shit, I ended up first playing on PlayStation. Then I found out about Ogre Battle 64. And, I mean, it, it's a really good fucking entry. And I know that they had that shit on the, uh, on the virtual console. So it'd be kind of awesome to see that show up on here. And it would definitely fill in that gap of just not having enough role-playing games, let alone, like, games this style. But that's all third-party shit. Now on into the realm of Rare. Rare and Microsoft, I mean, look, Rare ended up giving Nintendo 64 owners some of the best games of all time on this system. But ever since Microsoft ended up acquiring them, which it still, to this day, doesn't make any fucking sense to me, because I'm like, wait a minute, Nintendo owned a majority share in them, and then they just let them go. That makes no fucking sense. I mean, they gave us Diddy Kong Racing, they gave us Banjo and Kazooie, Banjo and Tooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Jet Force Gemini, Perfect Dark, and yes, all these games, I'm going to mention them all and just name drop them, uh, a fucking Killer Instinct Gold. Just think about this. You had all these games, all these games that came out on the system, yet were kind of fucked when it comes to them. Like I was mentioning with Donkey Kong 64, I mean, I don't know if they'd be able to do anything like this. Like Rare Replay came out, but Rare Replay, for example, the version of Perfect Dark that they have on there is the remade version that they released on Xbox 360. So maybe they could still get the rights for this, but then they'd have to go and split up the amount of money that they're making off each individual unit to be able to go and license this shit and acquire the rights to be able to just temporarily fucking do this. Is it actually worth it whenever they have an, an entire bevy of other games but with how important Rare was for them. I mean, I'm sorry, Killer Instinct Gold was the fucking shit. Like, I liked that game a lot, and there really isn't too many fighting games on the Nintendo 64 that I enjoyed all that much. I mean, Super Smash Brothers, but I mean, it, is it a party game? Is it a fighting game? Killer Instinct Gold was the shit. You had Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Fighters Destiny, War Gods, uh, Mace the Dark Age, like, there really wasn't any, like, top-tier fighting games, really, on the N64, which is kind of a bummer. What, Mortal Kombat 4? That entry fucking sucks, dude. Like, Killer Instinct Gold was the shit, I would like to see that genre represented positively, but can they, since it's actually owned by Rare? I really don't know. And Conker's Bad Fur Day, like I was mentioning, with Resident Evil 2, and with, uh, Doom 64, this is a mature-rated game, so would they be willing to go and allow some shit like that, even if they could acquire the rights. And then there's, like, 
Rare Replay, which is already out there, and you can buy that, what, for $15? That shit was a fucking pack, and along with the Gears of War collection, with the fucking X-Bone. Like, dude, that's like one of the most killer packings, because you were getting a shit ton of really fucking top-tier games. I mean, holy fuck, you know? And I, I, it's something that, like, it's a pipe dream, and a lot of the entries, again, it's all just a wish list. I know, realistically, many of these, from a business standpoint, couldn't actually happen. But in a perfect world, when they're releasing a Nintendo 64 Classic, these entries would be in there. Uh, some other shit I guess I'd add into it is, make sure that you allow for four-player support. That would make the most amount of sense. I mean, I know that they can do two players quite easily, but have two controllers included and allow for uh, controllers to be bought separately. So if anybody wants to play three player or four player with like Mario Party or Mario Kart 64 or whatever the fuck, then they can go and do that. Uh, I would do the shit where make a lot of them, but if you want to go and really crack down on some shit, make a stupid amount of them so that we're not seeing them on fucking offer up and on Craigslist and on Amazon and on eBay and on Facebook trade groups, just fucking everywhere except for in stores and in the hands of people who actually want to play them. And then it's just like, it fucking sucks when it happens. But if you want to go and make like limited shit, do with like the limited uh, limited edition colored versions of the 64s that they had. Like the see-through black and orange, purple, uh, blue and all that shit. And if you included an extra controller just for a proper throwback, allow it for be one gray controller and then the atomic purple one as the secondary controller. Dude, people would go fucking batshit for that. And seriously, include rumble inside these controllers because it, it, it helped a whole fucking lot with games like Star Fox 64 and with Rogue Squ Squadron and shit just like, it was a lot better and I like that a lot. And I would like to see these games, after playing some of them on the virtual console, they looked so much fucking nicer. And I mean, without having to go and delve into the world of emulation, this would be the shit. Like, it really would be, and especially with some of these games that I named off that haven't been released on the Virtual Console, this would be fresh and brand new. And considering that, what, with the NES Classic, you had, you had what, two million of those sold? And people are still dying to get more of them. The SNES Classic... I mean, they, they've only put out one batch so far of the recording of this video. But we don't know how many that they're going to go and end up making. We have the fucking holiday season to look forward to. I just want them to supply so fucking many that gamers are drowning in that shit so fans can actually get their hands on. And if you plan on a Nintendo 64 Classic, do that shit. I know that this ended up turning into a long video, but I want to talk a little bit about each and every single little game because... I mean, they all mean something to me, and it's one of the reasons why I want to name them. And I know I didn't mention shit like Beetle Adventure Racing, and Palo Wing 64, and 1080 Snowboarding, and uh, uh, Mario Tennis, and Mario Golf. Actually, Mario Golf should be on that list. As a matter of fact, I don't know why I didn't mention that. Alright, include Mario Golf. Sorry about that. Mario Golf I want to include big time. I really love the course design and all the fucking like gimmicks and goofy shit they had on that. A whole bunch. So if I was going to pick like a Mario sports game, Mario Golf would be it. I love tennis. Mario, Mario Tennis is the shit. But I'm just saying if I had to pick one. But regardless, there's so fucking many games on there that I could include on this list. Like, you know, uh, the Chameleon Twist games. Those ones are the shit. Uh, Mischief Makers. Again, really good fucking games out there. There's just too many to list off. That was my list. If you want to go and make a video, by all means go and make a video of what you'd like. But the Nintendo 64 Classic, that would be awesome as fuck. I can only safely assume that they're going to end up doing that because it'd be easy as shit for them to at this point in time, considering the success of the SNES and NES, and we've already seen that they have them digitally, and they've made them look great, and especially on brand new televisions, so fucking do it. Anyway, this is Alpha Omega Sin, as always, nerds, nerdettes, and gamers game! The fuck on! I should also include something here. I'm actually going to be at Retropalooza this weekend at the Arlington Convention Center. So this weekend, October 7th and 8th, going to be there. There's plenty of motherfuckers who are going to be there. I've been at every single Retropalooza, so the same exact song and dance I could name off. I mean, there's going to be cosplay contests. There's going to be a shitload of arcade machines and consoles set up for you to go and play. Tournaments all over the place. A bunch of video games for you to go and buy. Panels out the ass. It's gaming everywhere action figures, anime, all, uh, fucking an artist alley, like, you name it, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff there. I mean, it, it's a video game convention, it's really fucking awesome, and, I mean, I keep going back for a reason. Because it's fun, da 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 seriously, go. Or don't go and just say you don't have the fucking money, I already know you motherfuckers are gonna say some shit like that, but if I only had the money, I live too far away, I got shit going on, which are all understandable, because, I mean, 
Those are all good excuses. Especially not having money. Being broke fucking sucks. Ran into that problem, like, way too many fucking times. But anyway, Retropalooza. Be there, be square, something like that. I, I don't fucking know. Um, 